Right, in this simple example I'm going to continue from where I did the bike but this time I've got an assembly design of a car which is nice and flat. There's already a, a simulation in there but we'll come back to that. And I've actually modelled um, a roadway for the vehicle to run in. Car's about two metres along the um, wheel basins about 800 mil wide so it's sort of real but you know um, and then I've actually added some materials into it um, so that we can actually get some masses so in assembly design as you know we can set the engineering connections here we can do all the bits and bobs that we've done here so the only thing I've done additional to um, making the vehicle f work is that I've fixed the road in place and I've added these three um, constraints or connections to make the car go down the track. So if we uh, snap automatically, if I pick this vehicle or to be honest with you, any part of it and um, make it move. So I'm not making that move in the right way. Uh, which one is it? Oh, this one, sorry. Um, we can drag it about like that. Oh, sorry about that, that's not very good. Um, so let's undo that, re whiz that. So those connections are connecting the rear wheel to the road. So taking an edge of the vehicle and selected it along the sketch that I've projected through on the road where I want it to be. Um, I've got the other roll curve is the front wheel on the same sketch and then the planar curve is actually put in the uh, ZX of the vehicle and the ZX of the road in place. That one doesn't show because I've got it actually hidden. So then obviously you can see that we can make the vehicle go down the road. Now when to activate or to create one of these um, mechanisms we're not in the right workbench so we need to be in the mechanical system design app which gives us a slightly different set of tools again we've got engineering connections but we can actually create a mechanism representation now we'll do that again so i'll give this a name and i'll call it test for instance maybe test two um, and in this mechanism all the joints are created from the connections in the assembly and all the commands are created as well. Now what you'll see here is that every um, connection that has got a controlled type will actually create a control command. Uh, and if we go into double click on the joints of that second simulation um, mechanism we can see the status of it is actually uh, not right. I'm going to switch to automatic so every time I change something it will automatically update this. So there's no de degrees of freedom w w with commands there. Uh, the number of commands is four and they are based upon the four uh, connections that, or two connections of the roll curve to the road and each one of those um, connections the, 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 the circle of the wheel and also the sketch of the um, roadway we don't need the sketch of the roadway and it's still not up to status so if we switch off the roadway on the second roll curve that's not right either and the roll curve of the first one. These will just be driven. Now we have a, a situation where the mechanism is actually up to date. If you've got a, an orange line or an orange mark there, it, you can drive it but it might give you problems a bit later on. So let's have a look see what we've got and in fact what I've just created is exactly the same as the first one. So I'm going to double click on the commands there and we can see hopefully that the vehicle will drive within the limits I've set on the roll curve into that position. 
that's the first bit that we can look at here so I'm just going to delete this one because I, I don't need it that was just for your sake let's just check this command same thing close that right what else we can do here is um, we can actually put um, uh, uh, some a spring or gravity so gravity is actually uh, going down in the Z direction which is correct for this simulation uh, we can put spring on there there's not really anything in this model that I've done that with but later on we may be doing that and then we can also check the degrees of freedom and it will give us a business intelligence essentials box that that defines that so there aren't any things in error there are things that are fixed the roadway is fixed and what you see is the tree actually colors itself according to what we've got uh, partially constrained is the vehicle itself um, because we actually wanted to move down the the roadway so that's fine and then the other thing later on we we'll want to actually add some masses to this uh, particular assembly so in the weight definition there it will use the um, the masses or the materials that I've applied to each one of these parts in the assembly yeah so some of them are lighting up because I, lit, I, I copy them all at the same time so I don't intend to tell you how to put materials on there it's up to you to do that um, <clears throat> but what we can do is look at what it actually gives you now it's saying there that the uh, the toy car body is because uh, I've got that lit up that was 41 kilos if we look at all of those things that have been computed we can see that all of the parts of the vehicle have been actually computed the mass it's all aluminium the, it is quite a large assembly um, and some of these wheels are massive blocks so the wheels themselves are 30 kilos which is ridiculous really um, but I can actually change some of these so if I click on uh, maybe let's just pick on a wheel uh, let's pick one this side so I can see it um, they're all instances of the same thing so if I want to declare a weight on that I can actually decide that maybe that should be five kilos and you can see now that all the wheels are declared as five kilograms if I want to actually change that back again to what's been computed it's the information about the material and everything's all okay there so that works quite nicely the next thing to do is to actually switch to um, not mechanical systems design uh, because we're really finished with this particular uh, area now we need to go back and change apps again to the systems experience and it will ask us to uh, create a kinematic scenario um, and also it looks for this model is what it's going to be based upon I don't need to create a mechanism because I've already done that but it would do it for you if you want so leaving that ticked if I go OK I need to give it a name let's call it test 2 toy car maybe and then um, set the parameters there to it can start time at zero end time 10 seconds later and the step let's put that down a little bit to give us a few more bits and bobs and the um, the probes and such like um, we will put later on excitations are not relevant to this so let's just okay that now that hasn't actually done anything yet it's just created a, a, a scenario holder for the things that we want to do so if I click on the excitation recorder it's going to use this scenario one which we'll call this one um, test two and the parameters should be the same as what I've set there when I OK that it actually brings us up to the excitation recorder so if I switch that to automatic 
and change the step because I don't want it to go every millimetre, that's going to be ridiculous. So let's make it uh, every uh, 1000 millimetres and just click on this until I get to the end. Car travels along the path until it gets to the limit of the roll curve, which it's reached there. OK that, and that should have created a recording there. Now, uh, if I go and compute the results, you can see it plays to the end and automatically drops me into the results panel, um, which enables me, or should do, to be able to play that simulation. And you can see that is the simulation that's been played there. Um, and we can change the, the step, make it go slower. And what that's done, that's created a simulation of only the kinematic joints. There's no uh, forces or anything else on that at the moment. So if we press escape and then look at the plots, we can see that these plots, so for instance, that's just. Uh, give me a very simple plot and that will tell us that it's actually traveled almost 25 meters over uh, it's taken there looks like uh, 2.1 seconds it's actually taken to travel that distance so very simple kinematic simulation um, if we want to go back to the uh, other workbench if we uh, right mouse on any of these and oh, sorry, on any of the results maybe huh. get there in the end um, switch back to the mechanism we can actually uh, change workbenches and come back and pull some more information in so then if I double click on the scenario we're going into the scenario area rather than the results area. So if I switch to right mouse on one of these, switch to results, comes back to be able to play those results for us again. Escape that and switch back to the mechanism and double click on the scenario which takes us to different areas. So that takes a bit of uh, jiggery-pokery, um, but we're actually in mechanical systems experience, um, enabling us to actually now set out some laws and various clever stuff that we've got in here. So the next thing really is to set out to do a dynamic scenario that does have forces accounted for rather than this simple one um, but before I do that really I need to put some uh, various bits of information in there so if we look at applying a torque or a force let's put a force um, on this we're going to put a force on, on, on this device that toy car and it needs to be applied to a particular point um, and I think the coordinates would be okay with that and if I just put about 8 newtons on there I've experimented with this to sort of get that together so the direction wants to be set and in the different direction so I'm going to give it a shove of 8 newtons in that direction and then we've got an excitation uh, that has been put in there and we need to actually create a dynamic scenario where we can put that law into uh, the, 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 the situation and all of these things are set the way the last time I, I used it. Now I have experimented with this and I know that you need to change some of these tolerances so let's have a look and see what it will do. I'll preview that 
and let's see if it'll actually move and it's not moving and that is probably because of those tolerances so I'll just play around with those and then see what we can get <coughs> so um, adjusting the tolerances um, and I'm not quite sure what all this lot means but um, if I reduce the angular error by a factor of 10 uh, and the linear velocity by a significant factor um, I've run it for 20 seconds let's see what that actually does giving it a, a push down the hill it gets there after 20 seconds so let's just increase that to maybe 50 seconds see what happens Woo, off the track it goes and carries on with the momentum that it's got for 50 seconds so that's rather too much so let's try it for 30 seconds it's still way off the track at that point so 25 seconds maybe and you can play around with this to suit yourself. I'm still slightly off the track to 25 seconds, so maybe 22 seconds will be enough. No, not quite. That's interesting. 23 seconds. I'm going to leave it at that one. So. Like that. Yeah, that'll do. So that gives us that, but what we now need to do is apply a torque to it. Now I've already set this torque excitation in there, but what it's attached to is the axle uh, at, at the center line point there, and if I've reversed the direction along the y axis to make it turn clockwise. And I've applied 150 newton meters to it. Now, if I add that into the scenario, the dynamic scenario, let's see what that does. It'll probably make it go a bit quicker and certainly way off the track. Whee! And it's still going for 50 seconds. So it's miles off the track there. So we don't really need that that distance so let's change that down to about uh, four seconds I think might do it yeah. so that gives us um, a result on that so if I compute the results because at the moment there's only a result of the first um, scenario the second scenario maybe what I should do is just call this test 3 um, with forces okay, right. and compute it and then we can see from here we get a different set of plots uh, <laughs> the plot table is quite significant but what we have here is the uh, length curve and also the forces and the um, amount of torques by there so let's just deselect them all and let's see if I can look at the, um, the length and plot that. so the length is changing with time as it speeds up and there are other probes that we can put into that there aren't any probes in this at the moment so we need to go back to uh, the mechanism and, and add in uh, a number of other probes there so that's gone back to design double click on scenario and we can then set out a 
acceleration probe again that is um, so the support is uh, that point no it's actually which one to do right and lastly we need to put in a positional speed and acceleration to show you how to do that in the systems experience we have the ability to put in this though the um, support is the oh, sorry, product the thing I want to move is the um, body uh, the reference support is that point on the body and oops sorry got that the wrong way around so basically the reference point is a solid point on the floor or the roadway and the project and axis the position of the vehicle in respect to that and then we can customize the display and I really only want position X <coughs> and that will create a probe and then in there um, we can actually select I don't want the first probe to be in just want the second probe and uh, that should give us the same sort of result but then if I OK that and compute the result then in the result we should get an awful lot of things that we've asked for but if I look for linear velocity we should get a plot of the velocity of the vehicle as it rolls down the, the track and gets a maximum there at 23 meters a second which is quite fast so that is it really um, next time I shall actually try and do the same thing to our bike simulation down a track similar to that and we'll put a spring into the damper situation here and see if we can get that one to run thanks <laughs>